In order to identify the energy levels and fuels, it can be helpful also to think about typical energy supply chains and to identify what are the main stages that link the primary resources down to the final demand side. Take, for instance, as example, the oil supply chain that is represented in this slide. In this case, we can see that the energy flow starts in picture one with the oil platforms, where the primary energy resource or commodity, in this case the crude oil, is extracted and then loaded on the ships to be transferred to the onshore facilities, as represented in picture two. Here, the crude oil is stored as in picture 3 and then transferred to re the refineries in picture 4, where the primary commodity gets converted into secondary commodity, which in this case is the refined oil. Finally, as illustrated in picture 5, the refined oil can now be distributed to the final demand side, represented by different buildings, industries, etc. Therefore, looking at this example, we can say that picture 1 represents the resource side of the system. Picture 2 corresponds to the primary energy level in our system. Picture 4 instead represents the secondary energy level, where the primary energy carrier gets converted into the refined energy commodity that is needed by the demand side. And finally, on picture 5, we have the final energy level, or the demand side of our system. SEM schematization can be identified for each energy resource and commodity that is part of the energy system we want to represent. And it can help us to identify what energy levels and commodities are part of the system we want to focus on. To identify instead the technologies that are involved in our system to convert primary energy commodities into secondary ones or to transmit and distribute them along the system, it is important to list them based on a wide set of data sources that can provide such information. For instance, government reports, power plants databases, technical reports, and publication by intergovernmental organizations. After that, it is always important to try and group all the technologies based on similar characteristics and way of functioning. In the reference energy system, it will be enough to represent one technology per each group identified. Finally, here it is important to make sure possible future technologies that could potentially be deployed in the system are also included in the reference energy system, so that it is ensured the model can investigate all possible future development pathways. Let me now explain you a bit more why and how we should try to simplify and aggregate the elements of our energy system and what is the benefit of this approach when modeling an energy system. When looking at a real electricity system and how it is designed, it is possible to notice immediately how several technologies are repeated, like the electricity networks that connect different power plants to industries or residential buildings, or two units of the same type of power plant that are located in different areas of the country in order to supply different shares of the demand side. For this reason, it is possible to simplify the system in such a way that all the technologies that are similar in terms of characteristics and services they provide are combined in one single technology that is the sum of all the different real equivalent ones. Similarly, through this approach, it is also possible to define in the simplified system only the fundamental links between the elements of the system. 
The simplification of the system can be done at different levels. Also, the way a technology is defined can be simplified as to represent just the important characteristics that are sufficient to characterize the way one technology operates and allow the modeled system to capture its associated costs and how it interacts with the model system. One example can be the drawn by the picture above, where an oil refinery is represented in detail, and which can be simplified to a rectangular box with some inputs and outputs and associated costs. For an oil refinery, these are the only information that are needed to correctly represent it into an energy system model built in osmosis. Similarly, other types of technologies can be simplified in order to be represented in osmosis. And now, one last topic to consider. What about representing different regions in one single model? It might be the case that in one single country there are electricity infrastructures deployed as small subregions in different areas with high voltage interconnectors. It is good practice then to represent each of these regions as a system in itself that is connected to the other regions through importing or exporting technologies. So once again, to summarize the key concepts illustrated in this module, before starting modeling, it is important to take some time to understand what are the main energy levels, commodities and technologies available in the electricity or energy system we want to analyze, and what are the key dynamics of the system we want to look at, and to translate them into a reference energy system. In order to do so, it might be useful as well to identify key questions that should be addressed by the modeling analysis, such as in what technologies the system should invest in order to satisfy the future energy demand, and in what years such investment should be made, how much should be invested in total in the system over the next 40 years in order to ensure the demand will be satisfied, And the reason for all this simplification and aggregation of different elements in the system is to be able to not overcomplicate our models, but just being able to capture the key dynamics that are at the basis of the energy system represented and that allow to provide clear outcomes and insights to the interested stakeholders. Here you have a more realistic and detailed example of how a reference energy system should look like. In this slide, it is represented the reference energy system of the electricity system of Cyprus. This reference energy system has been used as reference to build the Cyprus country model that has been used to inform the local government on future possible options for the evolution of the system. And for now, this is all. Thank you for the attention and see you in the next video.